Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, tonight we have a very special service, and I believe that if you're here, you are meant to be here. If your family members are not here, your friends, I believe that you have to tell them they have to watch it tonight. Not tomorrow, tonight. Because I believe that we have a message that is going to change your life. It changed my life as, I, as we were preparing um, for the message. And the title for our message is Small Potatoes. Did you guys get your potato? Are we passing back? Can we pass the potatoes? Because God is so good that in compared to everything that we'll go through in this, on this earth, whatever trials and encounters we're going to have, I'm going to tell you that in the eyes of God, the biggest problem, the biggest trial, the biggest storm, to him, it looks like small potatoes. So when you look, do you, if you have your potato, I want you to look at it. I want you to take it home. I don't want you to cook it. I didn't give it to you to cook it. I gave it to you to keep it, and you could toss it, you could plant it, until the moment that you really realize that God has your back, that you really believe it, that we just don't say it, but we believe it. But tonight, I'm going to be sharing the pulpit, and it's truly, I had to write it down, because I'm going to share uh, the pulpit with someone that is very young, and... Um, it is with great joy to introduce this upcoming, okay? Listen to my words. Upcoming, mighty, faithful, anointed, an influencer of all ages, all generations. She has been in our church since she was 11 years old. Since she was 11, the first time she came, she said, I want to be a teacher. It was the first child who came who wanted to serve in children's ministry. That says a lot because I didn't even want to serve there. <laughs> she has learned to trust God because her life depends on it. Sometimes we don't trust God because we depend on ourselves. But I'm going to tell you that the person you're about to hear, she has learned to trust God because her life truly depends on it. She is a leader of our youth. She's on staff at Elevate and a great assistant to yours truly. And I want you to give her a great welcome to Lexi Hughes. Here you go, Lexi. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm so emotional already. I'm like crying during worship um, because, wow. Sorry if I'm already tearing up. <laughs> Woo, okay. Sorry, you're just going to see the ugly crying for the first part. Um, geez, God. I said I wasn't going to cry today. Um, the reason why I'm crying is because, yes, I've been here for since I was 11 years old, but my ro life has been rocked for the past two years. And my birthday is next week, and I'm turning 21. <laughs> But I'm emotional because I didn't think I would be able to see another year. Because life has been like hell. And it's a struggle to even like wake up sometimes and see life through the lens of God and see life um, as we should see as children of God. But anyways, okay, I'm done with the emotional side of it. but. Thank you, Pastor Virginia, for just giving me the opportunity to come and speak and for literally believing in me because I honestly I was like, I don't feel like I'm good enough to be up here, but I'm choosing to trust Jesus. Oh, so hard. Okay. Okay, so, and just so you know, I'm not a vulnerable person, so this is really hard for me. Um, but anyways, okay, so yes, our title is Small Potatoes, and in God's eyes, any challenge that you face or any hardship that you go through is small potatoes to him, 
And like, to me, I'm like, small potatoes, I'm like, I hate small potatoes. Like, like if you give me a small potato, like if you have some in your hands, I'm gonna open this because I have some small potatoes. And when God gave, when, I'm not gonna say God, but when life gave me small potatoes, I literally wanted to throw them like away, hide them, toss them, get rid of them because I'm like, I'm done with life. I'm done with the hardships. I'm done with the challenges. I'm done fighting. And I'm so going out of order for my message, but I really believe that that God wants to speak to you guys tonight because many of us, we fight more to quit than we fight more to win. And I'm a living example of that because I fought to quit God. I fought him to end my life. I was like, God, just take it. Like, I just want to be in heaven already, like, praising it up with you. Like, I don't have to be here in this dump of the world. Sorry, I'm not being super nice with my words, but it sucked. And so when, he, when life gave me these potatoes, I just wanted to throw them away, and I just wanted to get rid of them. But every time I feel like I wanted to throw them away, I feel like life gave me five more. And then I wanted to throw those away, and I wanted to hide those. I'm like, then life gave me 10 more. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, God, like, why do I have to keep fighting life like this? And I think many of us are here, and we're not fighting. We're, we're fighting from a place of, of weakness, and we're fighting from a place of, of hurt and of pain. But God wants you to fight from a place of victory tonight because victory is in Jesus. And so... Um, I'm going to see where I'm going to go because I have somewhere, so many ways to go. But one thing I was asking God today as I was preparing, I was like, God, like, I've heard this many times in the church, and I've even heard it from myself and just people in general. It doesn't even have to be the church, but people in general. And they're like, I'm just tired of fighting. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And it's like, and I was like, God, why are we so tired of fighting? Like, like this, you, you said in your word that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Does it always have to be this exhausting? And so this is what I believe God told me. He said, people often get tired of fighting the good fight because they're fighting the problem instead of fighting for the solution. And so in life, when challenges come your way, when things hit you and when, th when things take you off guard, it's not... It's not for us to stand here, and God didn't say, fight the good fight of faith, fight the problem, keep talking about the issue, keep talking about the challenge. No, he's calling you to speak life to that problem. He's calling you to seek him. He's calling you to surrender. And for me, for so long, I just fought God. And I fought the issues in my life. I fought the depression. I fought the anxiety. I fought the suicidal thoughts instead of just running to God. And I ran from God because I didn't view God through the lens of life or his word, but I viewed God through the lens of my pain. And I viewed God through the, la the, through the lens of the challenges that I faced. I viewed God through the lens of the people that hurt me, the people that misunderstood me, the people that overlooked me. And I viewed God that way, so I ran from God. But I'm telling you tonight, if you've been running from God or if you are going through something or you're fighting life, run to God. Run to him. Because he's going to open with, he's going to come, he's, you're going to come to him and he's going to have his arms wide open, ready to receive you. Because that's who God is. And I'm sorry, I try, I try to cry the whole message. I'm going to try to keep it together. <laughs> But it's just, it's just, it just shows you how faithful God is because I'm on this stage. And I'm, and I'm not asking for pity. I'm not asking for like, oh my God, I feel bad for you. No, I'm telling you to fight and fight for your life. To not quit, to not give up. And I want to put our first scripture, which is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. And it says, so we're not giving up. How could we, even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside where God is making new life, 
Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Hard times were small potatoes. Grab your potatoes. Say small potatoes. Compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. And so I tell you guys today not to give up because there's so much more life in store for you. And I always tell, as Pastor Virginia said, I guess I'm a youth leader, and I think that's why I'm, more, I'm so more passionate about youth is because I'm 20 years old, but the things that I'm going through are half of what our youth are going through already. And that breaks my heart to see 14-year-olds, to see 13-year-olds, to see 12-year-olds 12 12 go through depression, go through anxiety, go through suicidal thoughts. They're 15 years old. And they're already going through that, and that breaks my heart. So if, you, if you're a parent out here and you have a youth, take them to church. Send them to youth. Don't give them an option because I was raised in the church my whole entire life, and that was my foundation at 20 years old. That's why I didn't flee God. That's why I didn't leave the church is because my, my roots were found in church. And so if you have a youth... Take them to youth. It's amazing. We have amazing leaders. It's awesome. Shout out to Echo Youth. They're awesome. They're doing their own thing. Um, but I want you guys to know that to not quit. Life, as it says in the scripture, things may look different on the outside. It feels like life is falling apart, but God is doing something inside. He's raising up someone. And that person is you. If you continue to push if you continue to press and you don't fight the problem, but you, you fight life, find the solution, and the solution is Jesus. You get closer to Jesus. You chase after Jesus. When finances are adding up, when your marriage is falling apart, when your kids are going crazy, you seek Jesus. You push towards Jesus. You serve. Get involved. Serve all the more. This is what church is here for. It's for to be in a place where I can cry and you can see my ugly cry, but you can see the reality of life, but you can also see Jesus and his glory. Amen. That's where church is about. It's, not, it's fun. It's all fun and games when you get to hang out, but it's about seeing lives change. It's about being there for each other. It's not about judging each other. I'm a mess. I shouldn't be up here, but Pastor Virginia believes in me. Jeez. And that's our pastor. And it just shows you who she is because she believes in someone like me. Even when I'm still choosing to believe in myself. <laughs> and it's choice every single day. And it's a choice to choose life every single day. And not to let the enemy come and lie. Because I feel like, that, I feel like there's people here, the enemy's just tormenting you with lies that you're not good enough, that you don't amount to anything, that this is your life for the rest of your life. I have been there where it's like, God, I don't see anything good coming out of this, but I'm so going to choose life. And choosing life is showing up to work. Choosing life is giving a kiss to your kid's cheek, driving them to school. Choosing life is showing up to church when you don't feel like it. Choosing life is praying when you don't feel like it. Or even worshiping when you don't feel like it. There's moments that I've come here and worshiped and I didn't even believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. Because I was fighting the wrong fight. I was fighting to quit. So of course I'm not going to believe the words. But when you choose to fight the right fight, and fight it for life, you'll believe the words. I always laugh at myself because, yes, I'm a staff here, and so I always say the woman's bathroom was my best friend because there's times where I would just go up there and I would cry in the stall, and I would just sit there and I was like, God, like, why do you have me here? Or even another question that I asked him was, where are you, God? Where are you in the midst of pain? Where are you in the midst of hurt? And sometimes I didn't have an answer, but I knew he was there. 
because I saw another day of life. Because I woke up the next day, even though there was nights where I'm like, I prayed to God that I wouldn't wake up. And I'm being super vulnerable and I'm being super real, so please don't judge. <laughs> but it's real stuff, guys. Pain is real. Hurt is real. Anger, all those emotions are real, but I always tell the youth, I'm like, it's okay to feel those emotions, but it's never okay to live there. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to be sad. Have your cry. Take a moment. Go, to, go find a local bathroom or something, wherever you are. Have a moment, but then you get right back up and you say, no, I'm choosing life. And that's what you have to do. You have to turn the tables on the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to quit. He wants to steal your joy. He wants you to stop coming to church. He wants you to stop reading your word. But you know what turns the tables on the enemy is when you praise the more. When you pray even more. When you read your, more, your word even more. Hey, spend another hour here at church. Sur serve two services. And I promise this isn't like a propaganda for a sermon at church. I'm just, I'm just saying, just get involved at church. But I feel like the question that I asked God the most often was, where are you, God? And there's a scripture in Matthew where Jesus asked the same thing. And it's in Matthew 27, 45 through 46. And it says, for three hours, beginning at noon, darkness came over the earth. How many of you ever feel like you've been in a dark place in your life when you just feel like there's nothing but darkness all over? And at three o'clock, Jesus shouted with a mighty voice in Aramaic. I think I said that right. I'm not going to say that part because I don't want to butcher it. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? This is Jesus, the most perfect person on earth. Question, God, why have you deserted me? I think a lot of people would look at that scripture and be like, how dare you, Jesus? But the thing is, Jesus was human. He had emotions. He wasn't some robot that just came and didn't feel anything. No, he felt every knell that was not on that cross. He felt every word that people yelled at him that told them that he was nothing, that he was pathetic. He felt every pain and every hurt that people gave him, the slaps, the spit, he felt all of that. And at the very last moment, in the darkest hour, he questioned God, why have you deserted me? And I felt like that was my life for the past two years. Every single day, I'd be like, God, why did you leave me? Why did you abandon me? Why did you leave me like this? Why am I here, God? And I argued with him. And I fought him. I love the scripture um, because in the in part, if you read the first, I encourage you to go home and you read the, the whole chapter, but in the previous verses, there were statements where um, it says that he was being mocked. That people were like, where's your God now, Jesus? If you're Jesus, then why can't you come off the cross? People laughed at him. And people put him down. I don't know what doubts you have been chewing on or what problems you're facing in life or what challenges you've been going through or what season you may be in. But... I know that I think many of us, we allow those challenges, we allow those problems to mock our God. We allow finances, we allow marital issues, we allow our own emotions to determine who our God is. And that's the very thing that took place in this passage is that before he was on that cross, people were already like, I mean, while he was on the cross, people were mocking him. But many of us, we allow our issues and we allow our problems to mock our God. When anxiety knocks on your door and says, where's your God? 
or depression is right there in the morning when you wake up. Where's your God? Or what about anger or confusion or doubt? Because if it's anything that I learned in these past two years is the very thing that the enemy comes for is your faith. If he can get you to not believe in God, he won. And that's the one thing that I, I encourage you guys tonight to hold on to. Don't allow the enemy to confuse you. Don't allow the enemy to tell you and lie to you that your God's not real. In those moments, that's when you stand up, that's when you shout, that's when you praise, and that's when you say, no, this is who my God is because I'm coming out stronger. I may look like a mess right now, and my emotions may be everywhere, but I know that I'm coming out stronger. I'm not going to be the same Lexi. I'm not going to be the Lexi that doubted God. Will I have moments? Yes, of course. I'm human. But I'm not going to be the old Lexi that ran away from God, that wanted to throw the potatoes away. If anything, I'm going to use the potatoes to make french fries and eat them. <laughs> or mashed potatoes and gravy. Anyone like french fries? Yes, yeah, french fries are good. I think I should get some after the service. I'm just kidding. But anyways, stop letting your problems mock your God. But tell your problems who your God is. Because the God that I serve, the God that I've known for 20 years is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's who God is. He doesn't change. He's not moved when you question him. He's not moved when you're angry with him or when you doubt him. He's not in heaven pacing back and forth like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, Lexi's freaking out right now. No, he's not. And I'm sure, I honestly believe this from the bottom of my heart that God knew that Jesus would ask this question in the darkest hour. And he was not moved. Because as we know, the story ends and Jesus gets the victory and he's in heaven with God for the rest of eternity. But that victory doesn't just stay on the cross. That victory lasts forever, guys. That victory is embedded in our souls, is embedded in our hearts, that we can carry that for the rest of the lives, that no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, that we have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Whether we see it, whether we feel it, it's not about feeling. I, I learned in life that my feelings lie to me. <laughs> they do. But God's word never lies to me. If I'm feeling angry, go to the word. If I'm feeling alone, go to the word. There's moments in my life where I've had anxiety attacks and I've had to leave rooms because I just couldn't be around people. I didn't understand. I was like, and that's the hard part. I'm like, God, I don't understand. Like, why am I going through this? But it's because he's making me stronger. I'm 20 years old. I'm not too bad for 20 years old. I feel like I should be, I'm actually the hardest person. I'm like, you don't have to tell me that I'm not good enough. I already told myself that. But I'm learning. I'm learning to not do that anymore. I'm learning to really believe and trust God. I've always been hard on myself. I've always told myself that I should be further than I am. And so that's why I made it so easier when I was going through life to fight God because I feel like I shouldn't have been there. I should have been further. And for two years, I allowed my, my weaknesses to really get a grip on me. And I would literally say, like, like this is me. This is it. This is, this is my life for the rest of my life. And I fought God because I was like, no, I, don't, I, should, have, I, don't, I should be stronger. I shouldn't have to go through this, God. But in the word, God never said that it would be easy. He never said that it's going to be butterflies and unicorns. But he said that he would be with us. That he would not leave us. That he would not forsake us. And I was like crying in the front row because I was like, geez, that song, like, I'm not forsaken. I believed that life for so long that God left me. But he, he's there with us. And he reminded me before I came up 
on the stage, he's like, I'm with you, Lexi. I haven't left you. And in my head, this is not the ideal message that I would have prepared for. I feel like at youth, it's so easy to speak with youth. Like a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's so hard to speak with youth. I'm like, I love speaking to youth. I'm like, we can keep it real. We're, we're, we're both going through stuff, so we're like, we keep it real in there. But with adults, I'm like, geez, there's so many eyes watching me. Um, but I want you guys to know that there's life, and there's more life to come. So don't lose hope. I know, I'm sorry, I'm going over time. I'm going to finish up, though, I promise. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to see where I want to go. Another thing that I learned in life, and that's why I love that scripture about Jesus and him questioning God, is because it's very evident in that scripture that God isn't just the God of our victories, that God isn't the God of our highest moments in life or our highlight reels or when life seems in perfect order, but God is also the God of our weaknesses. He's the God of our ugly moments. He's the God even when we want nothing to do with him. He's the God when we question and when we go back and forth and trusting him. He's the God of all those moments. And that just to, that just, is to say how much God loves us. That he's willing to be my God even when I don't want nothing to do with him. Even when I want to quit, even when I want to give up, that he's still my God. And so I want to encourage you guys tonight that God is the God of your weaknesses, but he's also the God of your strengths. And so when you feel like life is falling apart and when you feel like life is just going under, he's the God of those moments too. And he's so near, even in the midst of life when it feels like everything's falling apart. Um, does anyone get anything out of this? <laughs> I'm like, it's pretty quiet out there. I asked the time I youth that, I'm like, hey, guys, like, I, li I like interaction, but I know it's okay. It's a very serious, it's a very serious message. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. I'm going to end it with these last few thoughts, and I think I'm going to close it. Um, all right, I want to share the scripture in Deuteronomy 31.8. It says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And so not only do we choose to fight the, fight, the right fight, but we have a God that's willing to go before us and fight it for us. When we choose to pray in those moments, when we choose to worship in those moments, that's when God's fighting for us. He's fighting for you. And I really want you guys to know that God wants to move heaven on, and earth for you tonight, just like he did Jesus on that cross. He wants to shake up your world because there's victory tonight over every situation that you may be going through. Sickness, disease, hurt, pain, lies. There's victory over that tonight. And it's all attainable. It's all in hand's reach, but you gotta, have, you gotta be willing. You gotta have that open heart. You gotta say, God, you know, I want life today. I wanna choose life today. I'm gonna choose Jesus today. And I'm gonna leave with this one last thing. I often ask God, before and with any message that I write, um, what's one thing that you want me to let your people know? And I honestly believe that what God put on my heart um, 
You know, how, many, how many of you have ever seen a couple say, like, I love you more? No, I love you more. No, I love you more. And just like, oh, my God, like, get over it. Like, I'm over it. Like, you love each other. That's great. Move on, right? And so I honestly <laughs> believe what God is saying is that he loves you more than any challenge you're facing tonight. And you can't beat that. He loves you more than any thoughts that have been circling in your head. He loves you more than any challenges that you're going to face tomorrow or the, the next week or the month after. But he loves you so much, and he wants to know that you don't have to fight this fight alone, but that he's with you and that these potatoes don't compare to the good times that are coming ahead. So rise up, keep fighting, and don't lose hope because God is with you and he loves you. And I'm done. Thank you, Lexi. That was great. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do have a mic. That's how you know I know she's a preacher. You know why? Because what was says, don't give me 15 minutes, right? And then we're like, 30 minutes later, we're like, how do I finish this? That's just me. Okay, can we put the same uh, verse that she used, the first one? It was Corinthians. Um, great word, by the way. And no, it's not a difference between talking to youth and talking to grown-ups. What happens is as grown-ups, we need to put on masks because it's not okay. It's only when we're teenagers where we're allowed. It's not that we're allowed. It's, that, it's just that it is what it is when you're a teenager, right? There is no filter. Have you noticed that they have no filter? You know, as, as we grow, we, we have different filters. And when we become Christians, we're all like we get the, the Holy Ghost filter. But it's not really the Holy Ghost filter. It's the ghost in the past. and whatever. Your own filters. So we pretend that everything is well. Like, you know, and sometimes, especially when you have the privilege to speak in your pastor or leader, people think that you never have thoughts that are, you know, that are not in according with the word of God. They think that, oh my gosh, to have depression is like I said last, I don't know, two months ago, like, I share with you guys that I've been dealing with depression and anxiety. But one of the things that I want to tell you is like, I'm not depression. I might have depression, but I'm not depression. And I think we're so afraid to label, right? Because everybody's afraid of labels. I mean, the world is such a stigma about having depression. But I'm going to tell you, you can have depression, but if you have a hope, we're good. That doesn't mean you're going to stay depressed the rest of your life. But what I'm saying is we need to stop being afraid of those potatoes. I was, I wanted to, um, and I believe that it was God. Lexi and I were sitting and we're like, hey, Lexi, preach with me. Your birthday's coming up, so we should be preaching together, right? And I had all this, th all these ideas, but the ha what happens is I'm last minute idea, right? Like I wanted to write in the potatoes just today. And we're like, let's put hope and good things. And like you get and you put whatever you need and write it in your potato. But did we put the, uh, the scripture? Okay, I'm going to read from mine, because uh, I have them have wrong. But it says, I'm going to just read it to recap it. So it says, we are not giving up. You read it, but we give up every day. We want to, right? We want to give up every day. So sometimes when you read it, it's like, oh, but I'm not in alignment, because it says that we shouldn't be giving up, but every day I want to give up. But that's not the point. How can we, even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life. I want you to know that it's, your life is falling apart in the outside. And many times you're going to feel that your life is falling apart in the inside. I always am making holes in this thing every, every Wednesday. <laughs> Somebody fix it, please. I'm not going to change my shoes. Um, you're not going to see me on flats. Well, how long do I have? If I go on flats, this is what you're going to see here. Like, I might be on stage like, but I'm not, no, no, no. That's not going to play here. I don't play that. Somebody fix it, please. Remind me. Um, but I read that scripture, and isn't it something that everybody's talking about the last two years? Who has been going through hell in the last two years? Okay, I'm one of them. Wee, right? But the difference is we're going through it. I did say, are we staying in hell, right? People are like, don't say that. Well, I'm sorry, but it feels like it. I'm not saying that that's my reality. I'm just saying it feels like it. 
but I'm going through it. And I think that that's why we need the body of Christ. You need someone. I know that what God says about me, but I also know that there will be times when I'm going to doubt what God says about me. And I need a person that has flesh and blood to show up and tell me, Virginia, no, you don't have to give up because this is what God says about you. You are believing a lie. Do you know when you are in a deep, dark place because life gave you the potato that you didn't want? I wanted to read, God gave you um, flowers, right? I thought that would be a better, a better verse. I was trying to help the Holy Spirit because the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Why would you choose potatoes? I don't even like them. They have a lot of like carbs, right? <laughs> like they make re like rollers, <laughs> right? You can additional things with potatoes. But it depends what kind of potatoes. These are good potatoes. I decided to go expensive on you. I didn't give you the Idaho potatoes. I gave you a good potatoes. You can eat them if you want to. I don't want you to, but you can. I, so as I was reading it and preparing the message, I was like, first of all, I wanted to do three things with my potatoes that life has given me. And I'm just going to tell you what I wanted to do with the potatoes. I wanted to throw them away. Lexi is so kind. Lexi just wanted to do this. Can you move my brother? I can say that because he's my brother. No, like move. I don't want to hit you. Just can you catch? I'm afraid. I forgot if you know how to catch. But if I hit him, he's my brother. This is what I wanted to do with the potatoes because I felt, you know what? Some potatoes, people's potatoes. So this is what I wanted to do. You can sit. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Flesh and blood. Okay, so don't think he, he's really my brother. <laughs> do not send me an email. <laughs> That's one of the things that I wanted to do with the potatoes. Because, yeah, Lord, is it awesome that you see them as small potatoes? Well, to me, it's not a small potato. And what I want to do is want to throw potatoes at people's faces. Because they're your children, and some of them are your children. Believe me, uh, I, I didn't grow up like, okay, some people say, well, you had the knowledge of God. No, I didn't have the knowledge of God. So if you don't have the knowledge of God, and then you become Christian. You think that Christian people are like Christian. But no, we're just people with flesh and blood, and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to offend people. And that's what we grow in the world, right? But when you're a little bit hurt and you're a little bit like in, in a dark moment, uh, last year, and I was saying to some of our leaders, uh, they were talking about being in a tunnel. When, they, they, when people tell you, no, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Liars, I wanted to say. <laughs> I can't even find a tunnel. Have you ever been in a place where you're like, there is a light? Like, okay, so no, help me find the tunnel. I don't even know where I'm at. But I, wanted, I want you to know that whether you see the tunnel, you see the light, Jesus is in the midst of it. And that's what we need to know. That's what will keep you going. Like if you know that you know, that you know that you know, that he loves me, that he is real. I might not feel him, but he is real. Another thing that I wanted to do with my potatoes was, uh, put them, throw them away twice. No, they didn't say that. Um, I just wanted to get rid of them. I wanted to get rid of them. I just don't want to see them. I'm going to pretend that I'm not getting potatoes. So you deny what you're going through, and you don't face your problems, because you know what? Uh, faith says, it's like I, I would say to you, like, praise God, you know, like, God did deliver me from depression when I came to Jesus. And I tell you why he had to deliver me right away is because I was very suicidal. 22 years ago, I was very suicidal. That was the first thing that he delivered me. And then all of a sudden, two years ago, it's like, you're again. But now I question it more because now I'm a Christian, and a Christian is supposed to be depressed. It took me a while to understand I am not depression. 
I have depression, but I'm not depression. I am a child of God. So do not be afraid of whatever you have right now because that's not the end that's not going to be your end result. People don't say I am cancer. They say I have cancer. How is it okay for them to say that because they have it, but we can believe that God is able to resurrect them, that God is able to give them life, right? So it's the same thing when we go, I am sad. Okay, then you are not sad. You're right now having a feeling of sadness. And we have to get hold of that. And the other one, I felt like with my potatoes, I felt like I wasted my potatoes. Because those are just seasons in your life that they're going to be hard, but they're, they're used. God is never going to waste anything. Do you know that? He doesn't waste your potatoes he doesn't weigh those situations those hard places that you're gonna hit in life and maybe you're ready to hit or you will hit in the future he will never waste anything because according to his word he says that all things work together for your own good to those who love god and to those who are according to his purpose being called according to his purpose right i used to love that scripture until i have to believe what's the good of god so as I was preparing for my message, I started to cry, and I said, God, forgive me for missing the opportunities many times in my life when I didn't want those potatoes. I didn't want those, those situations. I didn't want those problems. I, I just wanted flowers. And I felt that he showed me, because I, I'm a very visual person, he showed me, do you know that potatoes are the only things that you can have? And I know because I don't cook, so I can t talk to you about that. That you go shopping and you have a good idea. And I know how to, one of the things that I know how to do, I know how to do a lot of things with potatoes. Throw my people, hide them, not cook them, have it in the back for like five months in your refrigerator. And then you need a potato and guess what? They have sprouts. <laughs> have you noticed that? And I'm Salvadorian. People say, yeah, you're going to use it because you're Salvadorian. No, because I'm smart. And all you do is I peel it and I can use it. As long as it doesn't have anything bad, and even the bad ones, right? You just cut them. I'm like, people would say, Salvadorians, you do that. No, smart people do that. <laughs> to feel Salvadorian, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I have a few here, huh? So I felt like this is what I did with my potatoes, and I was crying. I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. I wasted the potatoes because I didn't want them. And then I remember, and I was like, wait a minute. I remember what I do with my potatoes. They always have these sprouts because I don't use them. It's just a good idea that I'm going to cook, but I never do. But I thought, this is the only, I don't know, is, it, is this a root or whatever vegetable? For those who know, what is it? It's a root. Thank you. You guys are smart. So I thought, this is the only root that doesn't go to waste. Then even if we decide to hide them because we didn't want to face our issues, even if you decide to throw them at people, and even if it's like I throw it to my brother and just it got split in two, I'm going to tell you that if it's left there within a week or two, it's going to have sprouts. Because those live potatoes, those potatoes that God gave us, they, have, they came to give us life. So you haven't wasted there is no waste in the kingdom. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you threw your potatoes at people. And if you did, just go apologize. Ask for forgiveness. If you hit them, go take them out. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see a lot of sprouts and it look bad, but this is, this is a sign of life. And you can deal with your issues. You can deal with whatever you don't want to face. You can still deal with it when you're ready to give them to God. And on, I'm going to give you another scripture. Proverbs 14, 14 says, Your harvest what you plant, whether good or bad. Is everything about harvesting. I don't know what you have planted maybe you were one of those people that you grabbed your potatoes and you decided to just do a little bit with your with your problem because many times we don't want to face who wants to say 
that you're facing some financial troubles? Who wants to say that you're facing, you know, we, we, I think we're very, um, we're very comfortable sharing if we're, if we're dealing with some physical sickness. We always say, you know, can you pray for me? I have, I'm just going to give a few names. You know, I have lupus, I have diabetes, I have uh, high blood pressure, you know, because people are not afraid of those, of those diseases. But many times you do life alone and we think that did God did leave us because we decided to, to, to not share it with anyone because I care too much what people were going to say about me. What will people think of me if I got this problem in front of me? What will people think of me if my family is not right? What will people think of me if my children are not doing well? What will people think of me if I don't manage my finances well? What will people think of me if I am depressed? What will th people think of me if I have anxiety and it's back again in my life? What will people think? You know what, what the problem is? That we care too much what people think. And because we are so fixated in what, what are people going to think, we fixate our eyes, like Lexi said, we fixated in the problem and we forgot God and we actually push them to the side. And I have to say that maybe in the last two years I had table talk. Everybody enjoyed table talk the last time here? Yeah, I was having table talk with the devil. Because you're, you're speaking, talking to the enemy. And when those lives, those lies have been given to you and someone told you, no, you, you were never enough. You're never going to amount to nothing. Do you know that the words are powerful? And at the end of the day, I believe more what I believe and what I say or someone say about me. Because I cannot say that in these two years I was alone. No, that's not the truth. It is not the truth. God has always been present with me. It's just that I didn't want to receive it the way that he was sending me aid. Because everybody will come and they will say, you know, God is saying this to you. And he was like, Pshuk. sorry, I didn't hit you, right? It's my son anyways. <laughs> just in case, right? <laughs> but I didn't mean to, but just in case. You're like, I don't want to hear that. I want God to talk to me the way he used to talk to me three years ago. I want it in the package that I want. I wanted a different delivery. I wanted to hear from heaven. I, want, I wanted God to send an angel and speak to me. But then his, God says, but I'm in heaven. Jesus, I'm sitting at the right hand of my father and I left you with my entire body. You are never alone if you belong to a local church. Ever. You might not like the people that are sitting beside you. Don't look at them. And you know that it's not their problem. You know that it's your own problem. It's your own problem. It's your own issue. Do you know how excited I am when I see all these raises coming in the church? Father, I have prayed. Do you understand how much I have prayed? And I pray that God, it will be every nation represented in this house. So when I see Asians come in, I just want to hug them and love them like with all my heart. When I see Caucasians come, I was like, yes. When I see my black brothers and sisters, yeah. I always wanted to be black, just a disclaimer there. They seem to have a lot of fun, right? <laughs> Just saying. You know, when Anusha came here, Anusha's here, I was like, yes! She came and I, I think I probably spooked her out. I was like, you, where are you from? She's like, Indian. I was like, yes! This is an answer from heaven. This is a good potato. <laughs> I love this potato. You know what? Because it, it, it makes you come out of your own comfort. If you can only talk to the people that you feel comfortable because that's your race, my friend, it's time for that potato to die. Face it, plant it, and let a, a, another, another one come forth. Just saying. That's free. 
But I believe that God would tell you tonight to do, do not give up. If I haven't given up and if I would sit here with you and tell you, you would be bored of what I would tell you, like what I've been through in my life. But God, there's always a but with God. It's a good but. So there has to be a point in your life that you have to understand, like, okay, I need to know, like, I need to experience God. You need to allow people in your life to stop living a secret life. So many of us, we are not delivered. You know why? Because we have too many secrets. And the Bible says, if you confess to your sister and your brother, we shall be forgiven. We shall be healed. The church should be the safest place when people can say, you know what, I am dealing with that, but I'm, we're not saying it. Please, I'm not saying here that it is okay to live there. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't heal. No, I'm saying that he heals, but he does it when he wants to do it. He speaks to you when he wants to speak to you and how he wants to speak with you. Maybe if he hasn't spoken to you, it's because he told you something, but you didn't like what he told you. I cannot say, to be honest with you, that God did not tell me and spoke to me before my two years. Oh, God was speaking to me. But the last thing he told me was two words. But I like details. Do you understand? It's like, do you know who you're talking to? He told me, trust me. I know, but what does that look like? What does it mean? What's my first step? What do I need to do? Who's going to be there? When are they going to show up? When is the timing? Are you going to get rid of the people that I don't like? No, just kidding. No, I didn't say that. But you know what I mean? I have to see them, Lord. Is that trust? <laughs> but you know what I learned in the last two years that I can honestly say there's so many people here and I could go, I'm going to hug you because you have been a great potato in my life. I am standing here, like Lexi said, it's because you are doing your God job. And I think it's time for us to address, address our lives, address our issues, address our past, address whatever you need to address. Get over your, your, uh, the thinking of what our people are going to say at the end of the, the day. They're not my savior. My value is based in what Jesus says about me. And you know what qualifies you to speak on the pulpit? It's when you, you've been through something. Is when you were in the tunnel. Well, actually, it was a hole. It wasn't even a tunnel. But you know who came to make a tunnel? It was Jesus. And he led you out of that darkness. Then all of a sudden, because you were trusting him more and more, you saw the light. And he wants to free you. He wants to deliver you. And everything good in this life is going to cost you. Tonight, this is what God wants me to tell you. Don't give up. I always say that. Why do we always say that? Because we feel like giving up. Do not throw the towel. Don't waste your potatoes that life has given you. Galatians 6, 9 says, so, let, let us, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. Because at the right time, we will harvest a good crop if, what do you say, if, say if, we what, or, we, we want, you know, I, can, I cannot say, you know what, the process, it's, it's still a process, but I believe that it's also in our hands. Because if every day we want to give up, every day I want to give up, and every day, but I'm planting today, I'm planting doubt. Today I'm planting the pain. Today I'm planting the betrayal. Today I'm planting whatever with those potatoes. I'm just planting it, and then it's not going to be a good crop. 
And so when I see the harvest, I don't like it. And then we get mad at God and I have been mad at God, but actually I planted that. Some of it was like designed by yours truly. Some of it was given to us because life is difficult and we, we didn't have a saying into it, but some of it, we, we are, we're very good builders. So don't give up. Do not get tired of waiting. I'd be like that. Some of us are very tired of waiting. You've been waiting on God. You're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're still waiting. But you know the problem is that when we get to that point that we're waiting tired. Have you ever been t tired? No, I'm talking about tired. I'm not talking about that you have a long day at work and then you went to church and you spend like another four hours. And you're like, oh my gosh, I had it out. I was to the church and you get to bed and you're like, oh, I'm so exhausted. No, I'm talking that you're tired. You're working tired. You're smiling tired. You're believing tired. You're doubting tired. You're worshiping tired. And your life is so tired. I tell you why, because you're so fed up. You're fed up in the waiting. And I reminded, that's another message. I reminded of the ten virgins remember that parable of the ten virgins you know that they got tired of waiting on God on Jesus he was coming he says hey I am coming they all had the same things they all were given the same potatoes they just were lamps right they all got lamps they all got oils they all got the wick they got everything and he says that five got tired and got lazy and the other five were continuing to keep up like, you know, there, there, there is a cost. The other five probably were buying more oil, right? We're trimming the wick. And the other ones are like, you know what? If I'm the bride, have you seen Bridezilla? If I am a daughter of God and he made me a promise, I shouldn't be waiting this long. It shouldn't be this difficult. So I'm just be waiting, but I'm tired. And at the end, he says that they were not without a light. They just didn't have enough oil. And maybe you're at the point in your life that you have not enough oil. You have come to your life and, and maybe you still have a light, but it's very small. And you, know, you and I are in charge of flaming the fire, not Jesus. He already did everything that he needed to do. I don't care how smart you are, you're going to get tired if your focus is in the problem. If you hate your potatoes. You know what your potatoes can represent? If you hate what's going on with your family. Maybe you hate what's going on with your finances. Maybe you hate what's going on with, in your marriage. Maybe you hate what's going on in your church or whatever. You name it. But you hate it. Oh, yeah, it's time for you to like, okay, this is what God gave me, and some of them he's going to give you because he's going to refine you, and some of it's just life. We live in a world that is, is lost, and there's sin, and so I cannot be stuck in the why. Do you know how many times I've been stuck in the why? But why, why, why did it have to happen? I don't know. All I need to know is that God is going to deliver me. All I know is that God is going to heal me. All I know is that God is going to heal you. All I know is that God is going to free you. All I know is that God's going to, to bring financial freedom to you. All I know is that you're going to be cancer free. All I know is that he is faithful, that he never changes. I'm the one who changes my mind, but he never changes. So if you get up like that, there's moments, and I've been having my moments, like, you get up and you're like, okay, I'm going to choose hope. I'm going to hope today. I don't know. I'm just going to hope today. I hope, and that doesn't mean that I don't feel the things. That doesn't mean that I don't feel depressed. It doesn't mean that I don't feel the anxiety. No, I'm just choosing to have hope above the depression. And all I know is that he's setting me free and that I am free. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.